Okay, round two of this outrageously overrated type of found footage franchise is about to begin. Let's talk about Paranormal Activity 2. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2010 found footage supernatural horror flick Paranormal Activity 2, released by Paramount, directed by Todd Williams, written by Michael R. Perry, Christopher Landon, and Tom Pabst. The film serves as a prequel to the first film, beginning two months before and following up with the events depicted in the original film. The film was released in October of 2010. And while as much as it's pre much more different from its predecessor, it got mixed reviews and what have you. It came close to being as big as its predecessor as well. So anyway, if you haven't seen my review of the first Paranormal Activity, click on that card and it'll take you to the video in case you might miss it or if you want to see it again before I get into it. <clears throat> so let's get into the story. In August 2006, a burglary occurs at the home of Christy and Daniel Ray, trashing their house and leaving only their infant son Hunter's bedroom untouched. The only thing stolen is a necklace that Christy's sister Katie gave to her. Martine, the Latin American family housekeeper, and Nanny senses evil spirits in the house and burns sage to get rid to rid the house of them, and Daniel fires her for doing so. Christy also believes that their home is haunted, and she and Katie talk about being tormented by a demon when they were children. Daniel, however, initially dismisses her claim despite footage of strange occurrences around the house. Daniel's daughter from a prior marriage, Ollie, begins investigating the mysterious happenings. She discovers that humans can make deals with demons for wealth or power by forfeiting the soul of their firstborn son, but if the deal is not fulfilled, the demon will stick to the family until another son is born. Hunter was the first male to be born on Christie's side since the 1930s. The violence escalates as the family's German shepherd, Abby, is attacked by the demon and apparently suffers from a seizure. As Daniel and Ali take Abby to the veterinarian, Christy is attacked and dragged into the basement by the demon possessing her. The following day, Ali is left home with Christy, unaware she is possessed. Soon, Ali hears a scratch sound in the basement door and opens it to find scratches and sees a word, Muse, which is Latin for mine, etched into it. A strange bite mark on her leg and footage of Chrissy's attack motivates Daniel to rehire Martine, who repairs a cross to exorcise the demon. Christy will have no memory of having been possessed. Daniel goes to pass the demon onto Katie so that Christy and Hunter will be saved, despite Ollie's pleas not to. Now for the ending. Again, as always, you know the procedure. Five seconds of this video, go to the description box. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. And by, um, go to the description box, you, you know the procedure. Okay, you've been warned. That night, when Daniel tries to use the cross on Christy, she attacks him, and, and the house lights all go out. Using the handheld camera's night vision, he walks around the shaking house into the basement where he is attacked by Christy. He retaliates against her with the cross, causing her to collapse. Daniel puts Christy to bed and burns a photo of a young Katie passing the demon on to her. Three weeks later, Katie visits and explains the strange things have, that have been gun happening at her house. On October 9th, a night after Micah is killed, a possessed and bloodstained Katie breaks into the Ray house, kills Daniel and Christy, and then takes Hunter with her. Ollie comes home from a school trip to find the corpses, and Katie and Hunter's whereabouts remain unknown. End of story. 
So what did I think of Paranormal Activity 2? Well, I do think it's... It's... No, okay, and what have you with... And I do agree with some of the reviews, like Ron Tamil says, it doesn't cover any new ground, but its premise is still scary, and in some respects, it's a better film than the original. I factually do agree, but... It is... It is pretty scary in ways in why I view it. As we have um, a cast that includes Sprague Graydon as Christy, Brian Bolin as Daniel, Molly F. Frame as Ali. Of course, um, if you don't know who Molly is, uh, you may remember her from the last few seasons of Last Man Standing. I believe. Was it the last seasons? No way. It, no, no, no. I'm sorry. My mistake. I made an error. No, the the no. She was originally Mandy in Last Man Standing before I, she was replaced. I'm sorry. My mistake. It was a different man. Molly it took over. <laughs> My mistake. Um, Katie Ferrison returns as Katie, and a little brief appearance of Micah Slope as Micah. We have um, Vivis Cortez as Martina. Plus, um, the Prieto, if I mispronounce it, I do apologize, Jackson Zinia and William Wan playing Hunter. Anyway, yeah, the cast wasn't, wasn't too bad. It, I do like how it blends shock and suspense and what have you. Yeah. But I will say it does provide a little bit of some spooktacular shocking intenseness and what have you. So, overall, I think Paranormal Activity is pretty good in ways. Uh, the story isn't too bad either, so can't really complain about that. But the question is, though, would I recommend it? Well, I would say, just to play it safe, give it a one-time watch. But if you are a hardcore completionist of paranormal activity, then I'd say go for it. But my, but my safe, but my safe recommendation is give it a one-time watch. Enough said. So, what are your thoughts on paranormal activity too? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button. Subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. One more thing I forgot to mention about this. It is, I do appreciate how it was pretty shocking and dark and what have you. I've already mentioned the shocking part, but it being dark and what have you, yeah. Oh yeah, and another thing is, when it got released on physical media, there was also a special unrated director's cut. I I think that might have been the version I saw last month. That could be wrong. But anyway, let me know what you thought about Paranormal Activity 2 in the comment section below. And you already heard the rest. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of Paranormal Activity 3. So thanks for watching. And if you like this, consider checking out some of these other spectacular types of flicks. In the upper left hand corner is my review of the 2001 remake of 13 Ghosts. The upper right-hand corner is my review of the found footage flick The Blair Witch Project, or if you would like someone else, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see a back-to-back -back review I did on the original and remake of the classic House on Haunted Hill. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.